In 2023, uh, Google finally made the Pixel Pro kind of sort of better than the normal Pixel 8. And if you've guessed that they did that by making the Pixel 8 worse, you're kind of right. Okay, uh, it's, it's not that bad, uh, but it's just that up until now, it was sort of very easy to recommend the non-pro pixels just straight up. See, the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 7, they were fantastic. Same-ish hardware as the Pro models, minus a zoom camera, and they had like a great price of 600, regularly discounted down to 400. The Pixel 8 is kind of the same thing, but Google gave the Pixel 8 Pro exclusive software features. And since this year's Pixels are $100 more expensive, the Pixel 8 is now $700 and the Pixel 8 Pro is $1000. I mean, it's still a fairly big difference, but with the base Pixel 8 now being $700, it's just harder to jump straight to that as a recommendation. And there are some new differences to discuss, so let's jump in. If you want a smaller phone, it is still definitely the Pixel 8 for you. It's a 6.2 inch display versus 6.7 inches on the Pro. And that's 0.5 inches you can definitely feel. Shut up! Both screens are OLED and both can hit 120Hz for smooth animations, which is great. The Pixel 8 Pro's panel is LTPO, which means it's capable of dropping down to 1Hz, so it's super energy efficient with the always-on display feature, but that's kind of a niche thing, so it shouldn't sway your entire buying decision. We measured both screen to be about the same in overall max brightness. That's not to be confused with peak brightness, which measures the screen's capability to light up a single pixel or an area of pixels for a few seconds or so. In peak brightness, the Pixel 8 Pro is much better than the Pixel 8, with a 2400 versus 1600 nits. What this should mean to you is that the Pixel 8 Pro is better at displaying HDR videos when you are trying to watch them under direct sunlight. Because we all do that. Otherwise, display performance is pretty similar on both phones. Inside we have the Google Tensor G3 chips on both phones, 12 gigs of RAM on the Pro and 8 gigs on the non-Pro. Not a massive difference, but you know, power users and such. Anyway, Google's Tensor chips are made as platforms for AI and machine learning with specific sections of them dedicated to these processes. Presumably that's why the Google Assistant can have exclusive features on the Pixel phones, like call screening and direct my call. Then why is the new Gemini Nano AI only available on the Pixel 8 Pro? Ok, so Gemini Nano is a generative AI specifically designed to be installed on phones and work entirely offline from the device's resources. It arrived on the Pixels with this December drop, but only on the 8 Pro, not the 8. Granted, it can only do a couple of things right now. It can summarize the meetings you've recorded with the recorder app and it can enhance the predictions of Google Keyboard only when you're typing within WhatsApp. I am hoping that once Sorry, it gets... Sorry, there was a problem. Please try again. As I was saying, I'm hoping it will get some more features and maybe then those features would make it to the Pixel 8, maybe the super expensive Pixel Fold, Pixel 7 Pro, maybe. I'm hoping. My point is that Google sent a clear message here. If you want to be on the forefront of Google tech and test everything as it becomes available, you have to have the Pixel 8 Pro. What's that? You don't want a huge phone but still want the best from Google? Oh well. And then the Tensor chips also have the enhanced Google Imaging Pipeline, which takes these awesome photos and clips with the HDR tech, the super res zoom algorithms, night sight and so on. This December, the Pixel 8 Pro got a new Video Boost mode. Here's how it works. You specifically have to go into Video Boost before recording the actual video. When you're done, the video will be uploaded to Google servers, where it will be enhanced with better HDR and better details, entirely off the phone. Then you download it and look at it. It's a bit hard to share right now, but as long as you look at it through the Google Photos platform, you should be fine. Since it's an entirely online feature, I still fail to see why it's a Pixel 8 Pro exclusive. But again, here's your message. If you want the latest and greatest from Google services, Pixel 8 Pro. Never mind the fact that you may have bought a Pixel 7 Pro 10 months ago or Pixel Fold like 6 months ago. And since we're talking cameras, let's just go through some samples right now. Both the Pixel and the Pixel 8 Pro have the same main camera, that's a 50 megapixel sensor with an f1.68 aperture lens. And both perform the same, with photos looking basically identical. 
The Pixel 8 Pro has better wingman cameras. A 48 megapixel ultra wide camera versus a 12 megapixel ultra wide on the Pixel 8. And yes, its ultra wide shots do look a bit sharper thanks to that upgrade. The Pro also has a zoom camera that's a 5x telephoto lens with a 48 megapixel sensor underneath. It still doesn't get engaged for portrait mode, but it does help out with actual zooming, boosting both the Pixel 8 Pro quality and maximum zoom it can reach. Pixel 8 Pro caps out at 30 times zoom, Pixel 8 at 8 times. As for video, both phones have access to the action stabilization, which can be impressive, and both can record 4K video at 60 FPS if super stabilization is off, of course. Again, of course, the Pixel 8 Pro has exclusive access to the video boost function, but since it's always off by default and it takes a while for the video to process, I still think it's not going to be your main way of recording video. Lastly, we can talk about battery life. Now, the Pixel 8 Pro does have a noticeably larger battery, but it also needs to feed a bigger screen. So, in our tests, both phones performed about the same, though it's worth noting that the Pixel 8 Pro does hold charge better in standby mode. It simply has more battery. Tell you what, if you want the latest and greatest from Google, both software and hardware, then Pixel 8 Pro. It's obvious that the most advanced feature drops will be reserved for this one. I don't know what's gonna happen when the Pixel 9 Pro launches. And if you are fine with um, not being on the cutting edge and you just want a smaller phone that is still all Google, then I recommend the Pixel 7. That's right, I said it. It's cheaper and the differences between the Pixel 7 and the Pixel 8 are 